Hong Kong has uh, three economic and trade offices in the United States. The headquarters is in Washington, D.C. And then we have one office in New York. Our territory is uh, 31 states of east of the Mississippi River. And then we also have another economic and trade office in San Francisco. And I took up my post in July. This is my first trip to New Orleans, I'm, and I'm very excited about this. I've heard so much about your beautiful city, about the great food here, about your cultural diversity, about your jazz festival, the Mardi Gras, and um, the, the wonderful hospitality in, in this city. And um, I don't know how many of you, ladies and gentlemen, have been to Hong Kong before, or some of you, I think, might have visited our city. Uh, some of you may not have been to our city. Now let me show you a picture of uh, what Hong Kong looks like. Uh, on a clear night when you look at the city from the peak uh, Victoria. So we have been known as a city of lights. And New Orleans and Hong Kong do share some common features. Both of us are port cities. Now show you our port. Well, Hong Kong has uh, one of the world's busiest container terminals. We rank number three around the world. And uh, we are very proud of this fact. And uh, I know that you also have wonderful ports here. And so this is one common feature that we share. And then another common feature that we share is that our, uh, we have uh, very diverse cultures. In New Orleans, I know that you have a blending of Euro European traditions with Caribbean influences. Well, Hong Kong, uh, we pride ourselves on having a culture of East meeting West. Now, this is a picture showing you of the many festivals in Hong Kong. Uh, the, the picture on the uh, left-hand side uh, is the Cafe Pacific International Chinese New Year Parade every year. So this is, a, a this is part of our tradition to celebrate the Chinese New Year uh, in Hong Kong. And this year, we're going to have this parade again. And I'm very glad to know that actually this year, Louisiana is going to send a float to Hong Kong to join in this Chinese New Year parade. The Louisiana State University is going to send its Golden Girls and Tiger Girls dance groups to join this parade, so we are very happy to welcome them. And the right hand, uh, uh, the, the slide on the right hand side shows you the New Year countdown. Um, so we celebrate uh, two New Years, the Western New Year as well as the Chinese New Year. This shows you that we, uh, we really celebrate a lot of both Western uh, festivals and also we, we keep our Chinese traditions. And um, well, these are the common features shared, some of the common features shared by our two cities. But other than that, Hong Kong is also a very close trading partner of Louisiana. These days, uh, the press is all about the trading deficit that the United States has with China. But do you know that with Hong Kong, it's the reverse? In 2009, the U.S. had a trade surplus with Hong Kong of over U.S. $17.5 billion, with total two-way trade reaching U.S. $25 billion. And the trade between the United States and Hong Kong has been growing. In the first eight months of 2010, U.S. exports to Hong Kong rose 29%. And Louisiana also contributed to this growth. Louisiana's total exports to Hong Kong in 2009 reached U.S. $65 million. And in last year, for the, for, from January to September, your exports to Hong Kong grew another 15%. So trade has been very close between our, uh, your state and Hong Kong, and we are confident that you will find Hong Kong an increasingly important trading partner of yours in the coming years as demand increases in Asia. And I understand that Louisiana is uh, picking up econo economy-wise. We congratulate you on this. And as we step into this new year of 2011, I think it is a very good time for us to look at fresh opportunities for growth. And this is what I hope to be able to uh, convey to you today. I will foco focus on three things today. Number one, why Hong Kong has attracted so many foreign companies and among them U.S. companies to our territory. Number two, how our economy is doing lately. And number three, the new opportunities that our city will be able to offer to businesses in Louisiana. Num 
So firstly, why is Hong Kong an attractive place to operate your business? Now I'll show you a map of uh, where we are. So you see China and then Hong Kong is just next to uh, Shenzhen, that is a southern part of Guangdong. We are called the gateway to China for very good reasons, because we, we are already part of China and very close to the southern part of China. Our tiny city of 11,000 square kilometers or 420 square miles with a population of 7 million people became a special administrative region of China on 1st July 1997. And for the 150 years before that, Hong Kong had been a British colony. Hong Kong is the first experiment in this world where a city within a country operates under totally different political, economic and social systems. This is called One Country, Two Systems, a stroke of genius of the late Chinese leader Deng Xiaoping. Under this unprecedented arrangement as enshrined in our constitution or basic law, Hong Kong enjoys a high degree of autonomy and retains our own unique systems and policies. I'll just give you a few examples. The, Hong Kong adopts the British common law system and our court of final adjudication lies in Hong Kong, not in Beijing, not in anywhere else in China. We run our own legal system, which is familiar to the international world. Hong Kong has our own independent immigration system. U.S. citizens do not need a visa to come to Hong Kong. So anytime, get an air, airplane ticket and come to Hong Kong and you will be in our city in, in no time. And Hong Kong people also hold a different passport from that held by Chinese nationals. Hong Kong people with our passports have visa ac uh, free access to over 140 countries around the world, which makes business travels very easy for our workforce. And this is good for foreign companies operating in Hong Kong because their employees can, with a Hong Kong passport can travel around the world very easily. In Hong Kong, we use our own currency, the Hong Kong dollar. This has been pegged to the US dollar for about 30 years now and at a fixed rate of about US $1 to Hong Kong $7.8. Hong Kong maintains a separate customs jurisdiction from that of China, and we are a separate member of the World Customs Organization. We are also a separate member of the World Trade Organization as well as APAC. In Hong Kong, both English and Chinese are taught from kindergarten. We are a bilingual society. And as you know, Hong Kong is a free port. We don't uh, really uh, snap tariffs on any uh, import or export goods. And we ma maintain our own taxation policy. As you can see, uh, we have one of the lowest tax rates around the world. Profit tax is only 16.5%. Income tax is 15% at the maximum. And so there is no sales tax and no capital gains tax. And last but not least, Hong Kong prides itself on our respect for freedom of speech, freedom of assembly and religious freedom, as well as freedom of flow of capital. So whenever you are in Hong Kong, you go to the internet, you can reach any websites you want to. You can read all kinds of newspapers from around the world uh, without um, having any inhibition. And these are not just my own words, but listen to your own state department. It says the following about Hong Kong. Hong Kong remains a free and open society where human rights are respected. Well, some of you may have noted that um, just a few weeks ago, Hong Kong was named the world's freest economy by the Heritage Foundation for the 17th year. And in the Forbes magazine's annual ranking of the best countries to do business around the world that was uh, published around several months ago, we're very happy to see Hong Kong's ranking ro rising from number two in 2009 to number nine, uh, from number nine in 2009 to number two in 2010 scoring in the top three uh, uh, bands for taxes, investor protection, and both trade and monetary freedom. And um, Hong Kong is also the world's uh, 11th largest trading economy. And uh, also we attract a lot of foreign companies to our city every year. According to the United Nations, Hong Kong is second only to mainland China, where the uh, the attraction of foreign direct investment is concerned. We are the uh, world's uh, second largest uh, uh, destination for foreign direct investment.
And we do attract a lot of companies from the United States. Actually, uh, among all the uh, uh, foreign countries, U.S. is number one where uh, the companies based in Hong Kong is concerned. As this uh, slide shows you, we are home to over 1,200 U.S. companies. And last year, we added over 50 again. And um, you know these are large companies as well as medium-sized companies and also startups. They come to Hong Kong for very good reasons. And in my conversation with many American businessmen who have set up their offices in Hong Kong, I've repeatedly heard about what they find attractive in Hong Kong. Other than the independent system that I've just described, they said that they like Hong Kong for a strong rule of law and intellectual properties protection clean and efficient government, predictable policies, and of course, our proximity to China and a very close economic relations with China is something very important to them. In Louisiana, you have a lot of corporations and one of your largest corporations, Entergy, also has its office, its office in Hong Kong for quite a long time. And we hope that more companies and institutions from Louisiana and New Orleans will take an interest and set up an office in Hong Kong. And I'll give you a, a, a few examples about U.S. companies uh, based in Hong Kong and why they chose uh, Hong Kong. Uh, one very large one is Deloitte, the uh, very big um, uh, firm in the United States. They chose Hong Kong to set up their first Asia-Pacific tax consulting center. Before that, they actually uh, commissioned a consulting company to do a study for them to think about setting up such a center in Asia Pacific and where they should base the, the, the office in. So in the end, they come down to two cities. One is Singapore, the other one is Hong Kong. And finally, they chose Hong Kong. And as one of the founders of this new center in Hong Kong said, they said that actually Singapore and Hong Kong both have a lot of advantages. They both have a very low tax regime. Both are open and free. But they chose Hong Kong because of our very close economic relationship with China and our proximity to China. And China, as you all know, is the fastest growing economy in the world these days. Another company, DuPont. DuPont is another big company from the United States. It has recently opened a subsidiary called DuPont Apollo, and it produces thin film photovoltaic uh, uh, products. It, and it's now decided to have, actually it's already open, it now has an research and development center in Hong Kong, but the production facilities is in Shenzhen, which is just next door to Hong Kong. And the uh, executive explained why, again, they chose Hong Kong and as well as Shenzhen. And they says that our business setup allows us to benefit from the best that both cities have to offer. In Hong Kong, an international business city with a complete financial and legal system, enjoying free trade and transparent flow of marketing information, and in Shenzhen, well-supplied land and labor force. So that's an, um, a model actually for many American companies. They come to Hong Kong and they have an R&D center or their logistics processing center or professional services center based in Hong Kong. And then they have another branch in another city close by in China where they will have the production. And they find that this model works very well for them. Well, some of the companies may think that, well, Hong Kong is expensive, it's only for the large corporations or well-established companies. But what about a small company? Again, I can have, uh, give you an example. A very small U.S. company called Intuitive Automator, uh, it, when it began, it only has three persons. This is born out of MIT and is in the business of producing robots. And it's decided to set up their office in Hong Kong. They have this office there running, and then they produce their robots again in another city in China. And the founder of this very small company has this to say. It is very easy, straightforward, and quick to set up a company in Hong Kong. And in comparison to the US, the cost of doing business is much cheaper. We think this is the best place to start a company, especially for startups with a limited budget. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can see that uh, whatever line of business you are in, and what, whether it is a big or small company, Hong Kong has something attractive and unique to offer if you wish to tap the vast business opportunities in China. And we welcome you all.